Well, the Eagles beat the Lions 44 to 6. Can't I can't be any happier about it. This made me feel good in my mind, in my brain, that we actually did something. And I and I thought we were the worst team, but I guess there was a team that was more crappy than we are. In all seriousness, our offense was kicking off on high cylinders. We we were. And you know, I got to say, you know, you know, obviously Jalen Hurts only threw 14 times, which, you know, fans are always going to complain. And, and that's just the way it is. This team is just not good enough. You score over 40 points. If this team won by three points, I don't think everybody would be happy right now. But still, nobody's really happy about this win. But when it comes down to it, you threw to Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith had one reception. Quez Watkins had one reception. I mean, there was no mid-tier throws. There was no deep passes. Really, Dallas Goddard had a really good game. Looks like a number one tight end out there. Played very well. Offensive line, I thought, blocked pretty good for the most part. Malata had a couple, you know, a couple blocks that really didn't go well. But he got better throughout the game. So I really wasn't worried about it that much. Owen Rager, you know, scored a touchdown today. You know, did a good job. He had an ankle injury. So they were using him on a lot of motion runs, which I actually did like. They weren't just lining him up. They were putting him on some motion, some some motion handoffs, which I was pretty happy about. The most important thing that we were kind of looking for in this game was Jordan Howard, Boston Scott. I mean, man, they ran the ball 40 times today. I mean, I mean, I couldn't even believe it. I mean, pinch myself. I couldn't actually believe it. Carries were distributed pretty nicely. I think like 14 to 16 carries for all running backs with Kenneth Gainwell as well. So it was actually really nice. Jordan Howard, man, I miss that guy so much. I really do. Oh, God. I mean, Jordan Howard, and everyone said he was washed up. And why didn't we? Well, we only carried two running backs. We carried seven linebackers, two running backs going into the season. I said, why don't they put Jordan Howard on the active roster? I really didn't know the answer to it. Howard is a bruiser back. Howard can get, you know, get to the second level, get some, you know, and run into more people and get, you know, another five to eight yards. I mean, he's good at doing that. And the Eagles, when they used him in red zone, I mean, we had about, what, four touchdowns from running backs today. I mean, it, it was good, guys. I mean, I couldn't really complain. Boston Scott, they're running him up the middle, east and west. They were doing all these little things with him. And, and Boston Scott has that sneaky speed. You know, he's short. He can fit through small cracks and get some big yardage, which I really did like. Miles Sanders is going to be out for another two weeks. And Jordan Howard is going to take the mantle up as, you know, I guess the, I guess the second... I guess the second back, the one-two punch with Miles uh, with with Boston Scott. I guess with Gainwell just sprinkling him in, in this offense a little bit, which I really don't mind. If Miles Sanders comes back in a couple weeks off the IR, obviously with the ankle injury, you, you gotta have Bo you have to have Jordan Howard in this offense because then you don't have to run RPOs. I mean, and, and the Eagles did run RPOs today. The Eagles ran some play action because you were running the ball. You ran the ball 40 times so you could do play action. The defense has to respect the action, you know, that you're going to run the ball. And, you know, the RPOs weren't forced to where Jalen Hurts forced himself to take it. I thought really besides like, you know, there was no mid-tier throws. There was no deep act. You know, there really wasn't anything that deep, you know. And unfortunately, I want to include Devontae Smith and Quez Watkins. I feel like they're not still not scheming those guys right till this day. Beating the Lions was just running it down their throat. And that's what we did. And obviously mixing up with a little bit of passing. And, and look what happens. You score over 40 points, in, which, trust me, I did not expect this whatsoever. Defense just played lights out. I mean, lights out. Defensive line, five sacks. Hassan Ridgeway, Milton Williams. Uh, Josh Wett had two sacks. Derek Barnett had a sack. I mean, Fletcher Cox had one tackle, still disappearing from this defensive line. Alex Singleton putting TJ Edwards at middle linebacker and having, uh, I mean, Davion Taylor at his side as well. I think that combination is a really good combination. TJ Edwards was a beast today, running downhill, being physical. TJ Edwards was all over the field. And the Eagles have seven linebackers right now, but they have been trying to find that right combination. So maybe we actually found that combination. Other than really playing zone, I figured that, you know, the Eagles, you know, they always give up these big plays playing zone, which I can't stand. Corners played well today. DeAndre Swift only ran for, what, 20-something yards today? So it wasn't really much. Sorry, my my, my face is frozen. They were only ran 20, 23 yards. DeAndre Swift didn't only ran, like, 20-something yards 
12, 13 carries, and, and the defense did a good job. They really did a good job against the run. They really stopped him. I thought he was going to run all over us, but it didn't happen. Dante Maddox with a nice strip set, with a nice uh, strip fumble, and Darius Slay makes his final revenge for in Detroit, and obviously he loves the city, obviously. That's where they, he was drafted and was given a chance, but runs it back for another touchdown, which was fantastic. I think really one of the big problems on defense, other than just playing zone, was really Marcus Epps on that Hodgkin, Hodgkinson, whatever that tight end from Detroit that was just he just couldn't cover him I mean it, it just it, he just had a really bad game Marcus Epps obviously isn't good we all know that I could take out of this game is that you know it's the Lions and I understand it I'm not stupid I know okay I know what this team is all about I know that they're 0-7 Eagles can build something off of this okay and we're gonna find out because there was a lot of talks obviously with Nick Sirianni his flower crap that he was talking about with the fertilizer but not even just that though there were play there you know how does this whole entire team change in one game I mean they besides the first game of the season really the Panthers game that the the defense really won it for us because the offense could not do anything for us that game until like the very end where it counted the most did the players go up to Nick Sirianni did they get together and say this is what we have to do because this is the right thing to do was is this Nick Sirianni's actual game plan that's the question. Is Howie Rosen even involved in any of this? That's just yet to find out about it. I'm not hyping up this win to say that this was, you know, it changes the season. You know, it, it is what it is. Like, it's a, we beat a winless team, but at least we know we're not the worst team in the NFL right now. But with this offense and how they utilize most of these players, except, you know, for mid, mid-tier passes, some of the deep passes, you had two receivers that really didn't do much besides Rager, you know, that, you know, ended up getting hurt. I mean, you ran the ball efficiently. I mean, there's going to be times where Jalen Hurts going to have to throw into, into tight windows, and your run game is not going to work against better talented teams. So, I, you know, the more that Jalen Hurts throws, I feel like the more mistakes he does make, but I'm hoping that, you know, this team could still run the football on you, regardless of what that rank of that team against our, uh, the run is. That's what I'm hoping for. The you know the Lions being you know 0 8 now. The Eagles destroyed the Lions. They pushed them around, and this is and this Lions team is a tough team. They were in a lot of close games this year. I I didn't think they would just back down, and they they literally the Eagles just pushed them around all game, which I which I I, I definitely love. But at the end of the day, it's. You know, it's something you could build off of, and that's what it's all about with with this team. You know, it, this year is supposed to find your building block pieces. I don't care what the other NFC East teams are doing. I don't care the Cowboys are going to win the division. I don't even care at this point. I'm just trying to see which guys are capable of being big time players for this team, and who are we keeping? You know, into next year because next year is a very important year with draft picks on top of it and cap space. So within two years, if, you know, depending what goes on with Howie Roseman and obviously what they're doing, Nick Sirianni hasn't won me over from one game. Let's get that straight. Or Jonathan Gannon at this moment, but at the same time, I have to say I was impressed by just how much this whole team changed, regardless if it's the Lions. This team could have easily got beat by the Lions if they played like they have been the past since the second game of the season. They could have easily lost this game. But I don't know what happened, like... Sirianni just totally did a 360. Jonathan Gann totally did a 360. We started blitzing. Like, we blitzed over like six, seven times. Like, and we got pressure on Goff and we took him down. And that's what you're supposed to do. You know, we, he took shots at the right time. So, did Howie Roseman just let, you know, these players and these coaches just figure it out themselves? I just don't get it how this team just changes overnight like that, which is kind of crazy. But really, at the end, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the win. I think this puts more excitement to next game. Can Nick Sirianni, Jonathan Gann, can this coaching staff still, you know, uh, repeat this, what we did in this game? You know, you're facing the Chargers next week, one of the worst teams against the run. You could run on this team next week all over on them. You could do it, but we just have to see if, they could stay consistent with it. So if they can't, then there is something wrong. And, I, and one game, like I said, this game doesn't say, oh, I'm okay with Nick. And No, I'm not. Okay, one game is not going to win me over. If, you know, you're coming on to games now where you have the rest of the division you still have to play, you have the Chargers next week. So there's a lot of winnable games here, but they got to show me a little bit more. I hope you guys enjoyed your Halloween and, and enjoyed your day. And, you know, well, we'll see what happens in the, the time coming. So enjoy this win, guys. I know it's the lines. I understand that. We're all not stupid. We know. We know what the issue is. Jalen Hurts only threw 14 passes. I know. 
okay? But there's a lot of positives with it. And we need to see if this is the actual coaching and this is and and if they're going to be this successful, you know, see if they could put it up another notch next week against a better opponent. So, we'll see what happens, but let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this win. And just I want to hear your thoughts on it. So other than that, guys, I will see you guys later. Remember, shakes go up, follow slide. Peace out, guys. Peace.